can we flavor spirits with grain? Kind of a dumb question, right? That's whiskey. <laughs> I mean, most of us have drunk some form of whiskey in our lives, but maybe it's not such a dumb question. Maybe there's other ways to get grainy flavors into the spirits. That's what we're doing today. How's it going, chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. I'm Jesse, this is Still It, and today I'm gonna to explore the idea of putting grain flavor into a vodka. Now this isn't an original idea on my part. I wish I remember who it was, and honestly it was more than one person, but a few people have suggested, essentially, to take grain and treat it like a botanical. Put it into a vodka, and then redistill it. I see two potential advantages going about things this way. Number one is that we already have a spirit where really solid heads and tails cuts have been made, meaning potentially, maybe, we're gonna get a spirit that is easier to drink, smoother, more approachable, right off the still than we would if we were distilling a traditional whiskey. The second is, we can do teeny tiny little batches and try a bunch of different grains out, a bunch of different ratios and flavors, and maybe make some stuff to taste very, very quickly and very, very easily. Hmm. So, I do see a few potential issues that are gonna go wrong here, and we'll talk about those in a second, but first, Let's get stuck in with the absolute first thing that jumped to mind when I started thinking about this, which is obviously, obviously, if you know me, to mess around with peat. So we got 400 mils of vodka that I'm gonna put in here. And this is 100 grams of New Zealand peated malt. You can use, obviously, I'm talking like this is gonna work and how you can do it at home. I've got no idea. <laughs> So let's just see, but uh, you can get this here in New Zealand. Obviously use whatever peated malt you want. I, I wonder if this is way too much. So I'm just gonna kind of do this to eye and then measure how much I've got left. I think that's more than enough. That is right around 70 grams of peated malt. And I'm gonna turn this on too, uh, because I want it to start heating up. There's one other thing I wanna put in here. Hold on. I'm also going in with about 30 grams of Shepherd's Delight. Yeah, that is a lot of grain in here. <laughs> the Shepherd's Delight, I hope, like I said, I'm completely shooting from the hip here, but I'm hoping it's gonna give a almost sherry finished like taste to the spirit. So a little bit uh, sweet, a little bit caramelly, kind of, but more towards the uh, fruit side of things, like dried, dark fruits. That's what I'm hoping for. Uh, so we're just gonna warm this up and macerate it like I would a gin, and we're gonna see what happens. Which brings us to the first problem that I could potentially see going wrong with this, which is that we're pretty much just gonna make porridge in here, because we've put a whole bunch of starch in this pot, and now we're heating it up, and then when we actually come to distilling it, we're gonna really heat it up, right? Uh, and that is the reason that I've put it in here whole. Uh, I didn't crush it, and I'm hoping, I'm really hoping, that a little bit of maceration is gonna bring the flavor out without getting a whole bunch of the starch from the barley actually into solution. I don't know, we shall see. So uh, let me warm this up. Uh, we're gonna get it up to about 50 degrees Celsius, uh, and then I will just let it sit for a couple of hours, and I'll come back and show you whether or not we have indeed made porridge at that point. All right, we're up and running and... Okay, wow. Uh, I don't think we really need to take heads. Oh, oh my word, I've messed up. <laughs> Did I even need to reserve any? No. Ooh, maybe. Yeah, interesting. Okay, so flavor-wise, I don't think I needed to take any heads. The spirit is already like a solid vodka. Um, the flavor tastes all right from the grain. But on the nose, yeah, I'm gonna let it ride. It's just a little bit off. It's like a little bit too, mm, 
like a little bit too cloyingly sweet. It tastes kind of like an oxidized, sorry, it tastes amazing. It smells kind of like an oxidized beer, just a little bit too much. So I'm gonna let that go. But I have to say, we are getting a very, very interesting result already. And it begs the question, how is this run gonna play out? Is it gonna play out like distilling a whiskey? Is it gonna have tails? I don't know. Obviously we didn't ferment the grain, uh, but maybe those tailsy flavors that come from a whiskey are really grain flavors that go strange. I don't know, we gotta find out. I assume too, well, I should say I hope, that we're gonna get a lot more peat down near the end of the run, tails if we actually get them. Uh, but honestly, I've got no idea. We're into completely unknown territory for me. So I guess I'll check back in with you in a little bit and uh, we can reassess the situation. So I've only collected not even 100 mils yet, uh, but we've already had a drastic change in flavor. Um, initially, it was very, very heavily influenced. Well, I have to imagine it was heavily influenced by the Shepherd's Delight. Kind of very rich, uh, almost like, almost like candy or Tootsie Roll kind of flavor um, with dark fruits as well. Now it's switching over to a much more traditional grain flavor. And I do believe we're starting to get hints, little hints of the peat. So hopefully there's more of that to come. Team, we hear you. We've been getting a bunch of questions from you about chasethecraft.com, about the store, about things being out of stock. Uh, and essentially what it comes down to is two things. Uh, one, you lot bought a whole lot of stuff a whole lot quicker than anticipated. Uh, and two, for some reason right now, we're finding it really hard to reorder some of the stuff. So apologies about the Glen Cairns, they are on their way, I promise you. Uh, and also apologies about the t-shirts, we're working on that as well. Uh, to say sorry, we've put the coins in the store up at, I think it's a little bit over 50% off, both in uh, America and in New Zealand. We are also working on some new products with the store, which is very exciting. Uh, the first people to find out about any of this stuff is always the Patreons. Thank you, Patreons, by the way. Thank you so much for being the ones that support us day in, day out. I'll stand over here and put your names up over there. Um, but the second people that find out, or when we have just like restocks of items in the store, or uh, slightly different, like a different Badmo variety, for example, it's always the people on the newsletter that find out first. Uh, if you're interested, in being on that newsletter, you need to go to chasethecraft.com, scroll down on the homepage to the uh, little corn strip and put your details in there. Erin keeps telling me that we need to put a pop-up on the website to like harass people into giving us their email addresses. I feel cut. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I feel kind of weird about that. I don't know. What do you guys reckon? Anyway, uh, let's get back to distilling the grain, shall we? All right, team, uh, I've just realized that I turned the still off and let it cool down, and I thought I was recording, but apparently I wasn't, so apologies for that. Uh, but I did collect, keep collecting down to what I'm guessing is about 20% ABV, uh, and I never found tails, not in the traditional sense. I never got that wet dog, wet cardboard, toe jammy, like real oxidized kind of grain to the point where it's, yeah, like wet dog or toe jams. Um, but I found something else, and it's, I think it's worse. It's definitely different. Um, no other way to describe it. It straight up smells like cow shit. <laughs> so we don't want that in our drink at all. Um, I don't know what to do with this. Uh, this is, I, I've got no idea what to do with it, to be honest with you. So I'm gonna leave this as is for now. I'll put this into a jar as soon as I finish recording. Uh, but what I did is took a small little bit of it and then just by taste proofed it down to about 45% ABV. So let's have a taste and see what we've created here. Is it worth it? I don't know. So right away, this, uh, it's like, it. It's in the uncanny valley. It is so close to being whiskey-like, but it's not. It doesn't have all of that 
extra complexity, even at this stage, that a whiskey will have, which I have to imagine is two things. One, it's esters coming from the yeast itself uh, and esterification happening in the distillation process, you know, like taking a few of those acids that might get thrown out as well and esterifying those. But the grain flavor and the smoke flavor is so close to being really damn perfect, <laughs> like real perfect. And uh, it's, it's exciting and a bit of a letdown at the same time. I uh, gave Erin a little taste while I was waiting and she instantly said it, it smells like a horse barn. <laughs> and I was worried that it was the, uh, you know, the uh, herbivore poop kind of flavor coming through. But no, after pushing her a little bit and getting her to sort of describe what the flavor was more, we realized it just tastes like grain smells. It, it was the feed buckets she was thinking of, like oats and, and barley and whatever else they had in there at the time. And I totally get that. I totally, totally smell that. And because of that, it definitely doesn't taste like a whiskey now. It actually tastes older. It tastes slightly leathery. It tastes like dusty grain, not old and oxidized and off. I don't, it's a bizarre, weird, like disconnect in my brain because tasting more like a fresh bag of beautiful craft malted barley when you open it up and smell it somehow makes me think old in my head. It's, it's a really weird disconnect and I, I don't know where to put it. But I have two little things that I want to try with this. Um, the first is, I love myself a smoky Coke. And if you don't know, uh, a smoky Coke is basically an Isla whiskey with Coke. And I always feel a little bit, it feels a little bit rude <laughs> to put all the effort into aging a smoky whiskey that I love sipping by itself and then sacrificing some of that to the Coke. And really, at the end of the day, the only thing that's coming through is the peat flavor. So I wonder, I wonder, will the slightly weird uncanny valley disappear when adding Coke and leave behind the smoky flavor? Hmm. It, it kind of does. That kind of works. Funnily enough, there is a strange, slightly acrid flavor that I'm picking up now. It's not the cola, it's not the spirit by itself. I think that is too much of the shepherd's delight. So if I was gonna do this again for a smoky Coke, I think I'd completely ditch the shepherd's delight and go with just the peat malt. That is exactly what I would do. The other thing I wanted to try was to put a little bit of essence into this and see if maybe the two together worked. I just did a video on tasting these new essences, the, uh, what are they, the um, Impressence essences. And all of, the, all of the whiskey ones, all of the aged spirit ones, they just kind of come across as like, they kind of get the oak flavor, not terrible, like just the wood flavor. Everything else kind of falls flat on its face, <laughs> honestly. They're not, they're not bad, like if you want to mix it in Coke, like, sure. But I wonder, I wonder if this slightly Uncanny Valley real grain flavor mixed with this lacking kind of um, just complete lack, lack of complexity and nuance flavor, I don't know, man, like maybe the two just happen to work next to each other. Uh, I've just realized that this needs to be proofed down. Uh, and I need a pipette to put in this, so I shall return. All right, I'm back with uh, Proof Down Spirit and a tool, a wee tool. Get that much to start with. Okay, so it's changed the nose. Not at all. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, that's better. That is actually better. Wow, okay. Um, let's do a little bit more of that. It is a thousand times better than any of the um, essences I've had in the past because it has 
I don't know, it's just like kind of filling the gaps, but it's way better than this by itself too. I think honestly, mostly, I mean, this is the, the malt whiskey one. Um, so the wood profile is not as heavy or intense as some of the others, but it is adding that, that kind of soft, almost like glazed pastry sort of note to it. Just the, it, it's not, but it's close to it. And I think the other thing it's done actually too is, uh, hold on. It has, I think it's shifted the pH just slightly to be just a, just a touch more acidic. And after I swallow, I'm left wanting more. Like it tastes moreish to me now. You know what, there might be some room for experimenting here because this is definitely not, it's, it's just not a really nice single malt. But it's way closer to being something that I would sip neat rather than having to put it with Coke, right? Um, actually, that's a really, wow. I hadn't thought of that. This is really approachable. Uh, and when I say this, I mean the, the, the pure stuff that we got off the, the still, not the stuff with the essence. Very, very approachable, very, very drinkable. Funnily enough, much more like uh, a gin. We've already made all the cuts. We don't have anything crazy in there. We've just crowbarred flavor back in after we've dealt to the alcohol. Wow. Yeah, so it's not like a new whiskey at all. Very, very drinkable. None of that weird stainless steely kind of flavor. Um, none of that you're fighting with it being jaggy and you're fighting with the tails being a little bit too funky because you know it's going to be good later on or you're losing flavor because you cut, you know, you cut smaller to, to get rid of those things. So I have no idea what it is. Uh, I don't know what it's good for, but I feel like, I feel like maybe just maybe there is potential here for it to be good for something. <laughs> maybe help me out with your ideas and let me know how you think um, this could go better. I think I put way too much of that Shepherd's Delight in there. Uh, I also think that experimenting with a lot of different grains, that, that could turn out really well. So yeah, let me know your ideas, team. Anyway, I will catch you next time. Keep on chasing the craft, guys. See ya.